Hi, I'm Stonewolf, and I make travelog videos with my Energica. All right, it's here. One day, NC 500. I have 520 miles to get back to here. Uh, it's nearly five o'clock. I'm gonna go up to the castle now, and I'm gonna start at five. I'm doing this vlog at the hotel because it's raining, and I'm not taking my helmet off at the castle. Uh, <laughs> but I will be back here sometime between 11 at night and midnight. Just a quick note, I recently had a chest infection and my voice and lungs have not fully recovered yet, so uh, if my voice sounds weird during these videos, that's why. All right, we're nearly at five o'clock. We're gonna go on the dot. Uh, this is it, to get the power on, there we go, and we are ready to go. Five o'clock at the dot because it just like makes the math of when I arrive and depart places easier. Okay, so this is the front entrance to Inverness Castle, that's the castle, and if we go to this little map back here, right, we are here. And technically the start end of NC500 is not there, right? But as you can see, it's all under construction. So we're just gonna have to make do with here as our start end point. It's like, what, 100 meters? Maybe 200 meters, it hardly matters. Uh, but yeah, technically, some people would be like, actually, ways, yeah, it's better. Whatever. <laughs> Here we go. It's 5 a.m. We are on the road. First thing we're gonna do is sit at this traffic light. Yeah. Yeah, yesterday was beautiful and sunny. And Tuesday is due to be beautiful and sunny. And uh, you'll never guess how much of today is gonna be like this. Yep. Exactly that amount. <clears throat> nah. Uh, I think last time I looked at the forecast, the, the last couple of hours of my trip will be okay, but um, you know, most of it is going to be wet. Uh, so, you may be asking, what is the NC500? Because, you know, if you're not from the UK, presumably you don't actually know. The NC500 is a 520 mile uh, route from Inverness, where we have just left, to Inverness, where we have just left. <clears throat> um, and it goes around the highlands. It basically goes up the coast, across the coast at the top, down the coast at the other side, and then it comes across uh, the hills down into Inverness. That number is deceptive uh, because it is not all like this. Uh, not at all like this. So we want north to go straight ahead. We would go that way if we we're going to do it clockwise. So we'll be coming back that way later today. A lot later today. Oh, that's the bridge. Right. We did it before. We've cut out all of that bit. Um, because the ride leader just like stuck Google on. A Google brought us that way. Uh, what? One of the reasons I hit this bag is that it makes it that hard to put the uh, um, cruise control on. It means that I generally, instead of like turning the cruise control off by pressing the button, I'll generally just like tap the brake instead. It is normal. To the NC500 in four or five days. I would say four is kind of the minimum you want to do. Five or six is probably how much you really want to do because you want to take it a bit handy. You want to stop because there's a lot of stuff to see. It is, you know, 500 miles is a long route um, of the roads that are here. It doesn't sound like much, but 
this is not representative of most of the roads that you're going to be uh, traveling on. In fact, this is kind of the fast part. <laughs> um, so yeah, you probably want to do it in like five, maybe six days. Take a week. The NC500 is not something you should do. Um, as a speed challenge. It's something you should do as a tour. I am very wet. My phone is very wet. My stuff is very wet. My gloves are wet on the inside. Everything is wet. I'm ahead of time, which is great, but it does mean that um, the co-op is closed uh, and probably won't be open until after I leave. Uh, I'm shivering a little because I'm cold. I'm standing in like the door of the public toilets while I wait for my bike to charge. But I'm in Brora and uh, I'm ahead of time by some considerable margin. So that's good. Wet. Get wet. I am wet. My riding suit is wet. The inside of me is wet. My gloves are soaking wet. One of my boots is sodden. Uh, my phone is wet. My show notes are wet. Uh, water is creeping into the tank bag. I have just stopped for a charge. I was shivering a bit. I've been using the hand dryer in the public toilet to uh, warm myself up because that was the only thing that was open. Because the shop that was there didn't open until 7, which I knew about. But uh, we were running pretty early. I think that charge stuff ended up a little longer than expected. Um, but we got there 20 minutes earlier than expected. We're leaving 20 minutes earlier than expected. So, um, yeah. We're ahead of time. That's good. Oh, it's so different in the mist, though. Oh, oh my god, the surface! Uh, I can't be doing anything with this. Uh. Yeah, that's awful. <laughs> oh, wow. Now I've got no visibility. Uh, I think I know this one. Probably is I know I well like a whole sixty down the hill, but um because of the wetness <laughs> super confident in some of these borders. There's uh, standing water there. There's actually water flowing across the road. that water. Oh wow. I know I am being a pussy. But uh, you're not here. You're watching it on YouTube. And um, yeah. It's bad. I didn't need to be going that slow there. I just like I was busy wiping my visor and stuff. It is. It's a challenge. Uh, I don't mean that in a bad way. I mean that in a good way. Like it's a like it's a challenge of being challenged by it. 
but uh, it's a bit more of a challenge than I wanted. Yeah, kind of the issue is there's no real way to get warm now. The best I could do is like put warm food inside me, but I'm wearing cold and wet clothes. Um, and the only way that that can get any better is if I like is if they dry out. That's not gonna happen. Just dip below twenty percent. Oh, we're not going very far to go. And I kind of expected that that would happen. We won't be off by very much. Uh, well, you know, if I could do it in these conditions. Oh yeah, okay. I forgot about that. Yep. Yeah. <sighs> Private learn gets only. But. The public charger, and it's a grid serve charger if I recall correctly, is down here. In the private for guests only area. I don't know why it's not like in the main car park. One f***ing kilowatt! Hi, I've just plugged into a unit, and it's given me one kilowatt. Okay, so... Um, things have got pretty pear shaped in Jonah Grunts. Um, I got there early, half an hour early. I was really looking forward to stopping at Jonah Grunts and getting some food and some shelter, and that did, did not happen. It did not happen. I really was going to take a photograph as well of the sign, but that didn't happen. I just needed to get out and go and like get a charge somewhere. Uh, and I went down the road, and I, like, there's another one a couple of miles down the road, like a charger that nobody uses, and there's a reason nobody uses it, apparently. I limped to Thurzo at 40 miles an hour, and then went around in circles here trying to find a charger that I knew was here, because my phone was dead. Uh, and then I just came into Tesco's and had a coffee. That gave me enough time to charge my phone, because, like, find the charger which is around at the Ledger Center. So now, <clears throat> my bike is charging and I've come back to Tesco <laughs> to get like something to eat so I can have my lunch stuff and I'm like, I'm deciding whether I'm going to proceed. It's very wet. I am so wet that being wet has stopped mattering. Everything is just wet. My kit is wet. My show notes are wet. My phone is wet. The bar bricks are wet. The little box that I keep the visor cleaner in is wet. Ev everything is wet. It's all wet. All the time. But, uh, yeah, that doesn't matter anymore. It only matters because I'm cold. I've been shivering, like physically shivering, chattering a little bit. Um, you know, like in June. But just because I'm absolutely soaked through. But both of my boots are full of water. Um, and that has made like, like I could handle the chargers. It's just like because I'm also really wet and cold, I just want something to eat. But now I've been getting something to eat here at Tesco, and I'm going to, I think, proceed because I will be uh, about now, about this time, is when I would. Have been coming through Thurso on schedule. So I should be maybe 20 minutes late leaving Thurso, so we could still recover this, I think. Um, we could still do the one thing. There's no accounting for these things. It, it, it works or it doesn't. <clears throat> um, it's not that common. Um, to have broken chargers, but on a long trip like this, you have to assume that somewhere it's going to happen. Uh, we did have a little bit of trouble with that charger. Uh, when I got back, it had stopped at 40, which is incredibly annoying. It means I basically dropped 15 minutes on the floor. Um, so I plugged it back in, it's like 20 minutes to 80. Okay, sure, fine. 
Uh, I just stood around inside the leisure center having a chat with the leisure center lady. Um, but we, uh, we're back on the road. We should have enough to reach Durness because uh, Durness is actually much closer to Thurzo than John O'Grotz. Uh, I have eaten. Uh, I have switched to my summer gloves. Ta-da! My summer gloves uh, because yeah, I mean, like, why? I'm gonna get a bit wetter? Oh, whoop de doo. I'm already so wet, it basically doesn't matter anymore. Okay. How bad is it, right? Um, how bad? Well, essentially, I looked at uh, my thing and I was like, okay, we're gonna be 30 minutes late, maybe. So I think we're not 45 because of the charger, but we can make some of that up. In theory, we can make a little bit of that time up, <coughs> and then maybe Durnas might be a shorter charge just because we might be coming in with a bit more charge. We'll be probably skipping our contingency charge in tongue now because of that. <coughs> um. So I think we can make time up. And I really did, like, I sat in that Tesco and I was assessing where I was with this journey. And I was just like, I'm so done. I, maybe I'm gonna go back to Inverness tonight, today, you know? Now that I have had two coffees and a sausage bap and a Tonic's caramel wafer because I, you know, deserved some comfort food, frankly. Um, I am feeling more bullish. Um, you know, you're not yourself when you're hungry. Um, I thought I was done and then I sat down and I. I mean, I actually left all my kit on because. There's no point in getting dry at this point. There's no point in taking it off. I may as well just keep the water on me. It is actually better for me to do that than to try and get dry in like a short break. Yeah, I sat down, I got some hot drinks. I was in some warmth. Um, the warmth did not penetrate very well, but you know. I reassessed my situation and I looked at it and was like, well, it's not actually that bad. Um, it's not actually that bad. So, I was like, screw it. We're gonna do it. Stubbornness will win the day. But yeah, when I got into Tesco, I was just like, Scotland. I'm never coming up here again. But um now that I have had a chance to just get a little bit of shelter and a little bit of food and a little bit of warmth. I'm uh, I'm doing a lot better. So, yeah. Things have gone per shipped, but in the uh, cold light of day, not as per shipped as we had thought. And we can still pull this back and do it. We're gonna. Uh, I think it's Melvick Community Center. There is a charger. Like, look at this place. They have a charger. How good is that? Um, this is one of those things about the NC500 is um, even though we are out in the middle of nowhere, Scotland has made an effort to like try and get chargers out onto this route specifically. There it is! They have a charger. I'm a 
amazed there isn't more traffic. Like, I expected this to be just absolutely lousy with camper vans. There are very few multiple unit chargers up here. Uh, Durnas is a single. Olapool, I think, has a, a few different choices. Um, but I think they are all singles. Um, Anaf is a single, and Gerlock might be a double. They all do dual charging. Right. They uh, allow you to charge two vehicles at once. Yeah. Because you could use AC and DC at the same time. But. Um, that's no use to me. Hey, we finally got stuck behind the motorhome. <laughs> I was wondering how long it would take. Uh, well, we started out at 580 and we're at 673, so we've got nearly 100 miles in before it happened. 580? No, we started out at 480. Really? We're almost 200 miles in? Damn! Whenever I get stuck behind a motorhome, I generally tell you, you know, motorhomes have as much right to be on the road as everyone else. Um, however, in this case, uh, I am going to make an exception because these things, right, look at the roads we are on. Right, these are narrow, awful roads. The size of those things, they're too big, right? You wanna take your like your VW camper up here? You know, your type two or maybe a transporter if you're feeling more modern? Sure, go for it. Absolutely. But when you get into like large vans, like long wheelbase transits, not gonna be or those big coach belt ones? Nah, -uh. leave them at home. Um, absolutely, leave them at home. This is quite nice. Uh, the the surface is bad. It's like patchy. It's got like ribbing in it. But. nice you know I'm, I'm actually getting into it and enjoying it you know I'm caring a lot less about how wet and cold I am oh, you dick that car should have pulled into that passing place it was not acceptable to do that with bikes it's one thing but with this narrowness of road, a bike and a car passing is a problem. Uh, the sea is like 
a really cool sort of sky blue. There's a beach down over there. It's really nice. I hope you guys can see it. Um, there you go, look at that. It's really pretty. You might as well admire it. Uh, no, Google, I will not. What Google's trying to do is optimize my route here. Because um, Google doesn't like bringing you into tongue, it wants to bring you down this like tiny little single track road because around tongue. Um, but tongue is a part of the route. Ah, ah. It's a beautiful bay down there. Um, that's where the single track it tries to take you down goes. And what Google does is it redirects all of the big coach built um, motorhomes down this tiny little track. And oh my god, is it annoying! Wow. Um, this video somewhere of us meeting one down that tiny little road. And like. We're off the road in or like in the verge, pressed into the bushes, trying to let this thing pass. It's just like, oh wow. Uh, that is our contingency charger. It is extremely cool that it is there. I'm so wet I'm repelling further water, and the water that I've already taken on is like warming up to my body temperature. And it gets what's happened with my boots. You know, my boots are full. But like, there's not standing water in them. Right, if I took them off and t upended them, there wouldn't be very much that would come out. Um, it's the lining. The lining is just um, saturated. Saturated is the correct word, because it's not exactly getting more water out of it. On any day. Look at this! Oh! Oh yeah! Now that's a view! That is a view! Ah! Oh. landscape. As nice as these guys are, I don't really want to be behind them. They are cramping my style. And adventure riders are always going slowly. It's not really. It's not really a Goldwing kind of road. It is definitely more of an adventure bike kind of road. Um, but on the other hand, you don't need an adventure bike to do this. Hi. These guys are definitely slowing me down. Ah! Uh, Woof! That was scary! I hit the verge. <sighs> ah, now I'm full of adrenaline! Hooray! How are we doing? We look oh. Okay. Yes, we look fine. Whew. 
Yes, there's a light in the middle of the road. But it does go up around the turn, so. Now, check out that view. Oh, yes. And then, we have some nice bikers. Would I be like, an electric bike? An NC500? What? Um, there's this really cool cave in Jarnas called the Smooth Cave. Like, you can go down into it and stuff. It's really cool. Um, we didn't really stop for long enough last time to do it. I'm not going to be stopped for long enough to do it this time. Uh, I made it to Jarnas. I made up some time. And then just the Jarnas charger is bad. It's DC charging. Doesn't work. AC charging works, but of course I can only pull three kilowatts of AC charging. So uh, I'm plugged in, and I'm just gonna try and get enough to get the scurry. It's 25 miles, and that one better be bloody working. Because uh, if I have the AC charge all the way to um, all of who are going to be very angry and sad. Uh, I have no idea how late I am or whatever. It practically doesn't matter at this point. Somewhere near halfway, so I may as well keep going. But, like, the lady's like, oh, there's the tongue charger. And it's like, yeah, I know where the tongue charger is. It's 45 minutes back the other way. Uh, anyway, I really need the loo. So I'm doing the half kilometer walk up the hill to uh, get to the loo. Uh, I think one day in and of itself is a challenge. Like, it's hard. The, the chargers make it even harder. And frankly, I could put up with them if it weren't for the fact that I was soaking wet. It just everything's piling up um, but I'm gonna do it like I said after Thurzo when I had a nice warm meal and two coffees uh, I'm gonna do it and I'm determined and I'm committed now because like to get back from Durness I may as well just like finish the run
No, there should be a charger here. There it is. It's behind the toilet. Your destination is on the right. Please work. Please give me a good DC charge. Oh. Someone has actually dimetexed the next charger on it. Holy shit. I made it to scurry. And the charger, at least for now, seems to be working. Ah. Oh. Ah. Uh, now I need to look up how much I need to get to Olapool because I'm not charging any further than that. I just want to get to Olapool. Uh, and like make up a bit of time and have some food. Uh, but I have been making really good time. Anytime I'm on the road, I'm making good time. Anytime I'm stopped, losing time. So I need to get back in the road. Um, like I have been overtaking everyone. I've been coming up behind like other groups of bikes and they're just pulling in and letting me go past. And it's just like. I'm not doing it dangerously, but I am making up a lot of time when I'm on the road, but the problem is every time I stop, I'm just like losing buckets of time. Um, and it's really annoying me because none of it is my fault. It's all just the bloody chargers. And kind of the problem is you look at the chargers at ZapMap and you can't tell which ones are good and which ones are bad, but some of them are good. And some of them are bad. And it's like choosing the right chalice. Uh, I have chosen poorly. Well, after four charges and it's some kind of a problem, that one wasn't exactly fast, but it did the job. So it looks like MC500 is back on the menu, boys. Ah. We are approximately one hour left. For now, we're doing good. It's good. Let's look at this. This is cool. Oh, I really like how these roads went through the landscape. It's really cool. So, oh, look at these mountains. Look at them. Yes. Look at that vista. Look at it. Really cool. Yeah, I don't know if you can tell, but like, actually getting the charge really took a load off. Um, I was really concerned that that scurry charger just wouldn't be working. Uh, we can go that way, but uh, the NC500 doesn't go this way, so... This road 
is kind of problematic for meeting people. Oh, we're gonna be descending pretty hard here. Where does the road go? Yeah, there we are. Oh, look, you see the road over there as well. Go pretty slow down here because we may have to stop. There's a bit of gravel lying around. <coughs> and some of the turns are kind of sharp. There's some gravel. We're uh, getting some power back into our battery, which we're going to need because we have to go up that hill. Uh, run a little. I want to come into this hill with a bit of speed. It doesn't matter because we've got to go run. What? Front of the electric bike comes in handy. We don't have to mess around with gears. You're it, mate. You're it. There is a warning sign. Ooh, that is quite the bump. Well, I knew the rain was going to be with me for most of the day, so... You know. Oh, shit! There is the desire to make up time, but there is also, like, the desire not to get in a ridiculous accident in the middle of nowhere on a road where an ambulance might not be able to actually get to you. Bikes, this was day three of four. So we are well into it. Valley. <laughs> it's kind of like the, the thing here, you know, you have the, you get into the uplands and they're quite barren and then you get down into the valleys and they're like lush. I have a great love of motorcycling and traveling and seeing things and stuff and it's one of the reasons I got into like making YouTube videos about it um, because I, I love it and I want to share that love with people. But sometimes I do bite off more than I can chew. Yeah! Ah! I have a big smile on my face. I hope that comes through. <laughs> I mean, you can't see it, but like, in my voice, I hope it comes through. I have a big smile on my face. Ah! There's our bird castle. There you go, well, you can see it. It's a good spot for a castle, to be honest. Um, it's very defensible. Uh, the only thing is, there's not really anything here to defend. This is why it was annoying that I couldn't set my sat nav. But, it's okay. We caught it in time. Because the big side, it just says visit Elfin. There isn't an NC500 sign. Yeah. Here we go, 18 miles. Grand. So I got to Olapool. Uh, I actually got here um, one hour late, which is a significant improvement. And then it's taken me 25 minutes to get charging. Because uh, there's two charges here, one of them was in use, but I, but I got there and I just plugged it into AC because I really, really needed to immediately go for a pee and not like faff around with a phone trying to figure out where the charger was. Um, so that took me some time. Um, but now I'm going to have a nice 
sit down meal and we're gonna see how lit I actually am. But it's it's happening, it's drying up, which is good. Ugh, look at my fingers. Uh, it's drying up. I'm slightly drying up. Uh, I'm gonna eat some food and that'll get me like ready to go again. Um, I've got 200 miles to go, so we're well past the halfway park. Uh, it's looking up. Spent a little more time than we wanted to spend there, so are we 18, 40 something? Yeah, we're still an hour and a half behind. Well, uh, I'm not warm. Um, I had hoped that I would get all warmed up while I was there, but I couldn't really like sit inside anywhere because I am very wet. Uh, it was all like covered up and stuff, which was very nice, but it still like wasn't very warm. Uh, the burger was deliciously warm, and uh, they had my favorite burger topping on it, which is I could have it with a fried egg. Ah, oh, I love having a fried egg in my burger. Yeah, the burger was nice and warm. I got like quarter of the way into my like pint of Diet Coke and it was like, uh, excuse me, you have a coffee machine so I could have a latte uh, because I needed, I just needed some warmth inside me um, and also the caffeine is very helpful, I have been on the road for many hours yep, I left my hotel 14 hours ago If you're coming up this way, you'd be able to see it. Yes, there is. <sighs> look at the layers of rock up there. Yeah, look at that. We are actually, I think, ah, bollocks. We are, I think, actually going to make it back to Inverness tonight. This is amazing. The lady at the pub was like, oh, when you get back to Inverness, like, have a hot shower. I'm like, that sounds glorious. However, it's gonna be one in the morning when I get back to Inverness. Oh, look at this. Lush. It's pretty cool. shop in here that sells like souvenirs, uh, like stickers and stuff. Uh, I would like a vinyl for the bike, but yeah, yeah. I think I might have one at home. Well, this is Gerlach Harbor. Look at that. Oh, I think we're going that way. <laughs> No, oh, maybe we're not. I'm not sure. Uh, it stopped my contingent charge at Gerlach Harbour. About an hour 15 behind, so it's not too bad. I've made up time. But, I've made up time with expense of battery charge. So, charging, and my battery's warm, so... Yeah. Um, I had hoped my battery wouldn't be warm, especially because it's fucking cold. But, uh, it is. Snap talks. 
Uh, but, you know, just being slow charging. Uh, I'm gonna see if the shop's open. It's not gonna be open. Uh, I'm cold now. Not really cold on the road. Cold because I'm stopped from thinking about it. Uh, I'm gonna charge up as much as I can reasonably get. And, um, yeah, because this charger works, I want to get what I can get out of it. Um, and then I'm gonna stop it in that. And, uh, if I can get a charge there, I'm gonna charge there. But, uh, yeah, so I'm gonna do that. Yeah, we are behind, but um, every time we get on the road, we make up some time, so that's good. We're gonna take it a little easy in this one because, basically, because we don't know what the state of the charger is gonna be, and uh, our battery is a bit warm. <coughs> and I think that we're actually going to make a better time to take it easy. I have supreme confidence in my machine. I have very little confidence in the chargers. Normally, out in tour, I have pretty strong confidence in the charging network, but in this specific instance, no. At this speed, we basically only need one of the chargers to work. Yeah, look at that, that's really cool. Oh, son! Whoa! I think that's the first time all of today I've had actual direct sunlight. Oh, the surface is really nice. There's just no one else in this road. There's just no one else. And that's kind of like... a bit of real surprise. Just how empty it is. It's crazy. Just like... Here on my own. It's <laughs> not in use. Okay. This charger isn't working. It's completely frozen, and there is no phone service to call the helpline. I have 55%, uh, an estimated 67 miles remaining, about 70 miles to get to uh, the next charger, so 976 we'll say on this number. I've got Apple Cross Pass between me and there. I'm trying to stay positive, as I have been all on this trip, it's been pretty cursed. To be honest, I'm going to have to go slowly from here. Um, I'm going to have to set to 44 miles an hour, which is reality about 40. Um, to remind you, it's about as fast as I'll probably be going up here anyway. It's pretty, I guess. It's very beautiful. I'm sorry if I'm very muted here. Um, I'm trying to process it's hard to give you the energy with this happening you know one of the things that's kind of annoying about some of these is um, you coming down the hill and you like you get up good speed, but then you have to bleed it off to um, you have to bleed it off for a turn or something. 
because you don't have the sight line. And you don't want to like come around the turn and smack into something. Um, <coughs> and you get to like. Schleg. You get to a uh, hill right around the bend. And you're like, ah, oh, I wish I had that momentum now. But that is how we are playing this. Slowly extending and extending and extending. Uh, and yeah, I could have, and that I could have turned back, but. It was that the pride in me that said, we, We've come this far. Hello deer. Hello other deer. I'm gonna be prepared for you. Bye! Well, there's more deer friends. Let's be prepared. Stand by for action. Oh, look at these guys. Nice anthers, bro. Uh-oh, that's a lot of deer friends. They're gonna cause us a problem. Get off. There you go. Look at them go. Bye, dear friends. Good grazing. Now, fun fact, since we're talking about, like, fail chargers. Um, when we came up this way on petrol bikes, we were going to fill up at Apple Cross. And when we stopped, like the petrol station there was a single unmanned pump and it was broken that's my analogy for broken chargers imagine your fuel light is on and you come to apple cross and the petrol, the petrol pump is broken. That's what these single unit automatic chargers in the middle of nowhere are. They're the one petrol pump that's broken. battery. This is insane. My goal is to maintain 22 all the way up to the top of the pass. Hey, it's another dear friend. Hi there, dear friend. It's good. It's good deer behavior. Preserve yourself for another day. Another dear friend. Hey dear friend, you be sensible now. Nah. Here you go. At this stage, we're, we're very much operating on fuck it, what you're gonna do rules. And the, uh, the only goal is to get there. Oh, let's appreciate the view down the valley. You know that? Just us and our dear friends. We're basically using a 20 mile an hour cruise control to uh, haul us up the hill. Um, yeah, we're gonna have to tuck now just because there's wind. Oh, this is this deep bit. We're doing it. Doing it without getting any lights on, so that's good. We lost a bit of our momentum there, but that is too tight to stay in the cruise control.
Hello, magnificent dear friend. <laughs> Can you guys even see anything here? We're in a cloud. Physically in a cloud. There's some more dear friends. They're running away. This is good. I want them to run away from me, not towards me. Uh, it is really cool that it's all deer on it, though. It's, uh, it's really interesting. You never see that. Um, I guess it's because it's so quiet. I mean, it's eerily quiet. I think we're on the flatbed at the top, and we're about to come out the back of the bow. <sighs> this is Belloc the bow! We've topped out! We're on the way down! Ah! Oh. Yeah, see? Ooh, this is what I was afraid of. <laughs> Oh, beautiful. Look at that. That is a beautiful sight. Oh, look at the, just the light beneath the clouds. Oh, I've never in my life been happy to see a fucking oil rig. Oh. <laughs> oh. Oh, God. That is... That is actually just too fast. Uh, get back at cruise control. Look at the river down there. Uh, we're just crawling down the side of the mountain here. Oh, getting in that region. Uh, I think we don't even need to bother with that. There's not enough wind. The wind was just back there. Oh, that's glorious. Um, Oh, I feel so good about that. Uh, look at these dear friends coming up here. Hello, dear friends. Many dear friends. I may have to do a compilation of dear friends at this stage. Uh, I keep like going, oh, I should make a compilation of this or a compilation of that. I should make a compilation of like all the times trends appear. You know, that kind of thing. Um, but then, what happens is, it's just too much effort. We have gotten back up to 30%. Um, that's how good that downhill was. Hello, dear friends. Hi. Uh, definitely don't come up this way. Last time, we went uh, across that bridge, I think. Um, we're coming back up the other way, you could see the oil rig in the distance. And uh, I got such Half-Life 2 vibes off of it. I just got huge Half-Life 2 vibes off of it. And then I reviewed the footage. And because of the way GoPros do their thing. Oh man, I hope. I hope that was really good for you guys. Because look at the view. Oh. Because of the way GoPros do their thing, close-up things are big and far-away things are small. It didn't have it. It didn't have the like you could see the oil rig was there. Hey, look at those dear friends. You could see the oil rig was there, but it didn't sort of loom on the, on the distance the way it did in person. <laughs> a range estimate is 312 miles. <laughs> uh, I don't think we're going to get that. Oh, look at that. There you go. Oh, I didn't realize you could see it from up here. You know, if I have to do 20 all the way into um, Inverness, I'll do it. I'll just put my hazards on and I'll grin and bear it. If I'm sitting in my car and going, hey, Akishin is 
20 miles away. Um, it looks like it might even be shorter than that. Um, half, no, it's going to be about 20. Um, <coughs> then... Twenty-six percent. We could open the taps a little. I think there is a charger down here, but it's like an AC charger that doesn't have a cable. Oh wow! Okay, so um, <laughs> the charger at an at was broken, and the, there was no phone signal, uh, so I couldn't even call a helpline. And I have just crept over the Apple Cross Pass at 20 miles an hour. I'm in Loch Carran. I have uh, 45, 65 miles to go. It's about 20-ish miles to the next charger. Um, I have 26%. There's a hill between here and there. If the sheet is out... Yeah! <laughs> it's, it's 11 o'clock! But... We're... We're doing it! We are doing it! It is being done! We're doing it! Up here at 19% would be amazing. Oh, we stopped descending. Oh, we're going downhill. Oh, we're doing a downhill. Yes. That's uh, that's that machine down there. Okay. Exist and be working. Exist and be working. It exists. It exists. It exists. Is it working? We're about to find out. Yes. Yes. Start. Yes. It didn't work. Oh no. 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 Oh no. Hi, I'm at one of your chargers and it doesn't seem to be working. Um, so on my route, as far as I can tell, the next charge point is actually just in, uh, Inverness. Um, could maybe get to Dingwall, maybe, but I don't know. Like I said, I mean, my last, my last charge stop was... 70 something miles away and it was dead so I have crawled here at 20 miles for all that distance um, so I could maybe get another 30 before I run out but um, all right um, thank you for your help okay um, sit wrap I'm just chilling here with the uh, maintenance away crew at Act Machine um, Charge Place Scotland's operator did the best that he could, but... Oh boy! I have 15% and it is about 45 miles to the end 
I'm reading an estimate of 30 miles. I could maybe get that up by going a little bit slower, but I mean, it's, we're talking 15, 20 miles an hour. Um, there is nothing between here and Inverness. Here we go. All right, we've got four and a half hours. We could do 10 miles an hour and we can still get there. If I do this, it'll be <coughs> incredible. But it's a big if. I do have a little bit more power. Not very much. A couple of miles. They might get me there. There's very little I could do. Uh, we're still nine miles short. We're nine miles short even after all of those hills. So that's good, but um, yeah. Uh, we need, we desperately need a good downhill. We have 30 miles left. I should have just said 18 at an at. And slow rolled it the whole way. We've still got maybe two hours to go. <coughs> Feels like regen. If it is, I'm very happy because Regen is better than it not taking any energy. Oh, I thought we were going to have a much better downhill than that. We have managed to stretch about 5% out to uh, 15 miles. It's not good enough. It keeps going up and then it never gives me like the downhill that I need to compensate for the up. I'm going to 17. more than that but hope hope lies in that message <sighs> hope lies in that message I mean if it is 17 you've got a about an hour you could be there by three if it is 17 and if we make it Inverness is at sea level but I feel like I feel like the amount that we are going up does not match the amount that we are going down. Uh, it does somehow, somewhere, eventually, we must go downhill. It's at fucking sea level. I know we're gonna fail, but I wanna fail trying. This is truly unbelievable. But it's got to end soon. We're five short. We got to believe. We got to hope that there is enough juice left to make that last five. We're going to make it. We are going to make it. Holy fuck, we are actually going to make it. Oh, both of my hips are not sore. My buttons are killing me. <sighs> 22 hours is less than 24 hours. <sighs> I'm here, I'm queer, and you could totally do the NC500 in less than a day on an electric motorcycle. No, if you don't mind. If I put the side stand down, the motorbike literally might not start again. <sighs> so yeah, I made it. MVP by Energica. What a machine. Just what a brilliant machine. 
It got me there on about minus 5%, but it got me there. Trash tier definitely goes to uh, Charge Play Scotland. W what are you guys doing? Wow. <laughs> the state of that charging network is just not okay, especially the last two chargers where I ended up doing 145 miles with no charging whatsoever. I can't recommend doing this as a challenge, but it is a really nice drive, and if you're not trying to do what I did, taking an electric up here is probably pretty fine. Uh, I might come back at some point, but I think probably something significant would have to change with regards to the charging network for me to do that. Also, I really wish I hadn't been in crisis mode at Acnesheen and I changed the SD card because there's some beautiful stuff you guys actually missed out on. Anyway, uh, if you've got anything to say, hit me up in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like. Uh, check out some of my other videos, maybe subscribe to the channel, hit the bell, and if you'd like to reward me for entertaining you today, you can find links to do so in the description below. Bye bye